Hello, I'm Tom Dozier, and this video is on the prevalence of misophonia. How common is it? I did a, a first survey um, about a year and a half ago, back in March of last year, on different characteristics of individuals with misophonia, and I was trying to determine, you know, how does the misophonia develop, what kind of characteristics do these people have, and part of this survey, I had a an 11 point uh, rating for how severe was their misophonia. And it went from uh, 11 was having anger and rage only, uh, then down to having severe physical pain, overpowering emotions, physical pain and extreme emotions, on down to the point. Number six was elevated physical sensations and negative emotions. And in six to 11 rating, I found of the people who said they had misophonia that were solicited on websites that were for people with misophonia, 94% of the people met this criteria. So that looked, and then below, below six, five and under, it was kind of a smattering of, of responses. So I took six as a cutoff point. And I went to do a control group to compare you know, some of the personality traits and characteristics. And so I sent it out to my LinkedIn contacts and I said, hey, please fill out this survey. Much to my surprise, I had 5% of my LinkedIn contacts who had misophonia reactions. And so I thought, wow, this is, you know, this is not some extremely unusual phenomenon here. And in fact, I had people with misophonia popping up all over the place. So, um, I paid for a survey where they would randomly solicit individuals that had no connection to misophonia. These were just individuals who were willing to uh, fill out surveys to have a 50 cents donated to the, the cause of their choice. And I purchased uh, 310 people in the survey. Actually, I purchased 300 and I got a 10 bonus. So out of that 310 people, 50% women, 50% men, I found that I had an average, using that same criteria, uh, the six and up is a cutoff, 15% had misophonia-like reactions. Uh, it was more common amongst the women, 17.4% of the women, and 12.9% of the men. So uh, that was a, actually a higher number. I was expecting, you know, five to 10% came in at 15%. Well, this last year, there has been an official published peer-reviewed study that came out of the University of South Florida, out of their College of Medicine and their psychology department, and they used uh, undergraduate psychology students, which is very common in, in college research. You, uh, you give these college students, these psychology students, a little bit of extra credit for taking a survey or participating in some form of, of research for the graduate students. And they had almost 500 uh, participants in this study. Now, 84% were women, so that would tend to raise the percentage of uh, incidents of misophonia. And they had a study that would, their study was comprehensive enough to see how the misophonia affected the individual's life. And what they found is that 20%, 20% had clinically significant misophonia. What that means is they, they had to alter their life in some way just to handle their triggers. And that was very surprising to me that it was that high. Um, so the takeaway from this is that misophonia is really quite common. Now I'm going to say it's in maybe 15% of the adults. Uh, 20 seems a bit high because of the psychology students were mostly women and they were a very small group of people who were interested in psychology which may tend to raise the prevalence a little bit. So say 15% of misophonia in adults, it's more common in women than in men, but many, many people simply suffer in silence or they're written off, they're just grouchy, or cranky, or irritable. You know, in fact, thinking about this, if I went and grabbed a doctor or a therapist here at random, and an individual here at random, I think it would be more likely 
that my random individual would have misophonia than my doctor or my therapist would know about misophonia. So we're really trying to get the word out and uh, promote edu education uh, of misophonia in these kind of videos, awareness of misophonia, promote research, and to uh, develop treatments for misophonia. So if you can contribute, we would appreciate your donation to the Misophonia Treatment Institute. Thank you very much.